on the breakfast is just one day to APC primaries. You know, should state tension is rising. The Rauf Aregbeshola group and the Roye Gao Yetola group are battling for who would own the structure of the party in the state. As Fios Kesti bites harder in security, increases Nigeria's yet to end corruption. As the EFCC accountant steals about 10.9 billion naira looted Ikoyi money. We have details of these and analysis ahead. And as always, we'll be looking at the national dailies and have a guest join the conversation. A very good morning to you. Welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're back with another day of bumper, bumper discussions right here on what is a very interesting breakfast show. My name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Popo. It feels very great to be back on your screen. Fantastic. Well, we have uh, interesting conversations. Uh, continuation of part two of the Oshobo, Oshun State, rather, uh, political situation, especially as it has to do with the All Progressives Congress. Uh, yesterday, we had a guest, uh, one guest who seemed to, um, you know, uh, be supporting one side of the uh, political um, a tussle in the All Progressives Congress in that state. So um, today, we've decided to bring another guest to balance it out. We'll be talking about that later. And uh, some money is missing, and the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission have fingered uh, an official as being responsible for that. We'll talk about that as well. But let's start with our top trending stories. Mercy, um, I missed you yesterday, you know, so it's great to have you back um, you with your smile and your warmth on the program. Fantastic. Um, um, a video was trending online yesterday, and uh, I don't speak Yoruba. But I could, I could, I could sense what was happening. I, I don't, you know. Honestly. Yes, indeed. In fact, I'm going through uh, my feed right now, and I'm seeing um, a bit of what was trending yesterday. Um, the chairman or the leader of the National Union of Road Transport Workers in Lagos State, MC Olomo, the one who famously appeared in Tennis Song for your case. <laughs> Say she go report to you, give MC Olomo. Well, yes, MC Olomo is not someone to be played with anyway. Um, he's been um, a strong, um, uh, it's almost a militant, you know, kind of leader as far as a, a body that is meant to be a union, union, as people come together and form an association uh, with so much history, you know, you know, professionals is concerned. Um, and when, when you, you hit the streets of Lagos, you ask them about the, uh, uh, the National Union of Road Transport Workers. What they use is, oh, Agbero. They call them Agbero. Now, for people from other parts of the country, like you and I, Messi, um, we only hear Agbero, we think of something else. Mm -hmm. When we hear of um, National Union of Road Transport Workers, we think of something else. They are not the same. But in Lagos, they are the same. You know, so you have so, like, so you're saying that when you think of an Agbero, yeah, yeah. you think of the union you know, of uh, yeah, no, that that is what it is. Lagosians call the union people Agbero. You know, so so it's it's in Lagos. It's become a gradual. Um, you know, departure from that unionist um, thing we're used to, to a sort of um, uh, uh, a street thing, you know, a street urchin thing in a way. But the, the history of the Agbero is not really like um, a street urchin. The Agbero in Yoruba means people who load people into vehicle, all right, to enable them move from the bus park. And um, these people, the history is that they transited from being uh, area boys, you know, in the communities around Lagos. Um, you know, if you look at the Lagos, Lagos Islands, some other places in Lagos, that historically Lagos, Lagos, so echo, uh -huh. they, they, they moved from being the area boys because the economic bite was biting hard, you know, after the structural adjustment program of 1986. Uh, yeah, with um, um, uh, uh, Babangida, you know, things changed and people had to leave those their areas, you know, and now look for what to do. So they went to the parks. That's where they went to instead of helping people to load so they could, they could, they could fend for themselves because Naira went down and the prices of things went up. And after SAP. Um, um, so it's, 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 it's been a gradual pro pro progression to the extent that now, you know, urchins and all that traditions are now associated with, with this thing. In fact, yesterday, the leader of the KK union in some part of Lagos was complaining that MC Olomo had uh, taken over from his uh, union. It was alleging, alleging, and that the man had, uh, you know, been threatening him. And all. So you now see strong men and some rough guys involved in this thing. But um, the NURTW in the southwest Nigeria is, from my observation, a bit more uh, different from what you have in other parts of the country. In southwest, they are involved in elections. They're involved in politics. They're involved in, you know. So, so the video, the video that was trending yesterday was of MC Oluomo 
in a meeting with some people, a room full of men, okay? You know, some of wearing earrings and stuff like that. So you can <laughs> you can understand what, what, why people felt this way. And strategizing ahead of the 2023 elections and telling them how they meant to open some chapters, you know, in different parts of Lagos State and even the Southwest, you know, how they're going to build their structures. So uh, an interesting guy on Twitter, um, Aye Mo Juba, um, he's... Um, quite a uh, popular on Twitter, especially when it comes to election times, he finds his power there on political issues and stuff like that. He put out, the, I think, the first video I saw um, saying, if you think MC Olomo is and those in this ABC 2023 strategy meeting are jobless people or you're more busy than them, then you still don't get it. We can't wish ourselves into a working society and like a warfare, we need a battle plan. So uh, people, you know, you know, castigating the man, MC Loma, and saying, oh, these are area boys. They want to scuttle the election. They want to rig and all that. And uh, the, the conversation going down the road of, if you think that you are better than MC Loma, if you think that you are more patriotic than this guy, what are you doing ahead of the elections Good. to prepare? You know, and, and, and are you going to sit down and see these guys, if you think they're area that, boys? That's a very valid are question. Strategizing. They're strategizing. They're, they're, they're building structures. You could hear him. So you, who feels you are more patriotic than MC Loma? So what are you doing? What are you doing about it? Because the NURTW has been accused by some people of being, you know, behind some of the violence we see in parts of Lagos during elections. But some people from South East would tell you that they are not allowed to vote in Lagos during elections. You understand? So these are some of the things that uh, uh, cause people to, to talk. You know, yeah. Well, I mean, some of the questions and some of the issues that you have raised are very valid. And uh, so if you have, because the reason why you would have MC Oluwamo being on the top chat, especially on the micro-blogging platform, that's Twitter, is because of the kind of personality that he is. I mean, what he's associated to be, uh, you talked about the issue of militants and all of the violence and the Agberu, and how people perceive when you use the word Agberu and the actual meaning. So <clears throat> that's it, on the one hand. It just, it just feels like, so you have um, some persons who understand how politics actually work and the fact that they are trying to replicate you know the structures across the 36 um, states of the federation calls for a lot of concern yeah. so um, the fellow who put put out that question and was asking that if you are querying uh, the personality of the uh, of mc oluomo and his involvement strategizing for the all progressive congress ahead of the 2023 elections then uh, what are you doing but some people have also said you need to also understand why our war uh, created the or is associated with the r uh, the n u r t w and you know the role that it played these are when we talk about elections elections as a grassroots thing and when you talk about the road transport uh, that's the n u r t w you also understand that this is actually a grassroots thing and people who See, elections in Nigeria, let's not even move away from Nigeria. We understand. It goes beyond having a lot of people fancy, beautiful-looking boys and girls on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram making comments and all of that. The deal is done on, at the grassroots level, and this is grassroots, and this is the strategy. Whether or not the strategy is, you know, um, okay, we want to look at it in terms of uh, morality now, in terms of how they go about achieving the purpose, because politics is interest. Uh, you, over time, I would remind you that you have constantly talked about the fact that politics is interest, and interest is what people will go after. Now, you also have the Machiavellian kind of politics, where people don't care how it comes, but as long as you know you get it, it's what it is. So the end justifies the means. And so it doesn't matter how you get it. And so this might be the strategy that you have some persons. We know, um, you know, the personality of MC Oluwamo and all that he stands for over time. What does he stand for? No, I mean, for the fact that you have Tenny putting, putting him in the song and saying, I would tell... Um, I don't remember I mean, some of the words. I could tell him to you, Lou, um, For you, you know, uh, if you do me wrong, I'm going to tell I'm him, and you know what, that's going to happen. It's going to end well. So you, can, you make it go rough you up small. Exactly. <laughs> so with all of that, it just boils down to the fact that right. we need to understand that elections is not just uh, won by a fine boy face. It's not a tea Whether party. or not we it's not agree, it's politics. It's not, and politics it's not TikTok. It, Mm -hmm. It's not a talk. You, so you don't just come on national television and say, oh, yes, you yeah. want to win. So mm -hmm. a lot of questions need to be put out. We need to understand that the grassroots has a role. Look, because if you go, I have monitored elections at the grassroots level, and I understand. So mostly you don't have all the 
the pretty boys and pretty girls coming through. I mean, a few of them would definitely. But the people who vote at the, le at the level of the grassroots, and if they're trying to put out their structures at the grassroots, looking at, you know, how the economy is right now, uh, the issue of poverty, the issue of um, the inflation that has affected the economy, and you know that money politics can never leave, then you are sure that these people are moving. Whether or not we like the strategy, but that's what's been put out. Absolutely. And so the Absolutely. Machiavellian, you, you want to also read up about what the Machiavellian kind of politics is mm. how they you know what that theory stands for mm. and how he operates so it's definitely what's happening yeah. so if you don't like it mm. then what are you doing about it you know the 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 nertw in this uh, year alone you've had two incidents one uh, at lagos island um idumota at the market very there, popular uh, where two factions fought and uh, gunshots were fired there were bottles and all that and the police had to go arrest some people um, and the man has had been under fire. The union had been under fire. The Goshens don't like these guys. This is, I mean, I, I, I then what is, are they going be, to do because about they, it? they feel that they in menace and in nuisance on the road, stopping people, you know, collecting money, stopping cars and threatening. You know, they, they, they feel these guys are not um, uh, peaceful. You know, um, not all, but some. You know, because if you listen to the radio stations, TV stations, and the comments online, people are are not happy with the modus operandi of the union. I mean, even market women have to pay. The Keke Union um, leader, who says that the, uh, uh, M. Soloma has taken his union from him, you know, and is threatening his life, it's a negation. Of course, we don't know that's true, but that's the negative um, view people have of this this union. Um, you have also recently another fight in another part of Lagos between two factions of the NURTW again. This time gunshots were fired. It took the police going there and calling for backup, reinforcement from the headquarters to, to handle the situation. And uh, some said that was a way in welcoming the NURTW, welcome the new Lagos CP with a gunshot salute. <laughs> you know. So anyway, yeah, this, this, this underscores the importance of um, uh, people, you know, or, or it explains why people are now saying online, you know, go get your PVC. If you don't have a strategy, you don't have a plan. It's not about sitting down and talking and shouting. Exactly. It's about making sure people don't want to see the NERTW chase, chase voters away, you know, and, and then just let's, let's, let's look at the video. Uh, this is this is real strategy. Politics is about strategy, you know. Um, they don't want to see the elections scuttled, and then the will of the people taken away by by uh, NURTW. Uh, in quote, thugs is what some people the word some people used. I wouldn't use the word thugs on them, but some if you look at the comments online, some are using the words thugs. You know, if you go back to previous elections, you see the papers write NURTW thugs. You know, so. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think these guys are thugs, but that's the description that has been used. So people don't want to see this. So some say, you know, go and get your PVC. Well, but you need, you know, but you need to, you, you need to, you, you need to look at, you need to look at the, the um, you know, the, the kind of persons that you have in that group. Not necessarily trying to castigate, but um, like we have rightly stated, politics is a game of interest, and so people would always, uh, you have different group of persons, political parties coming, you know, struggling to control power, control the seat of power, and uh, be in charge. And so, uh, you you also need to understand the fact that. Uh, this is what it is, and so people would actually employ strategy. Whatever strategy, whether it's morally right or not, is a strategy that has been put out. And so what are you doing on the other hand? It's the question. So um, 2023 is not just going to be uh, just a walk in the park. A lot of work needs to be done. Some people think that nothing is going to change because we have uh, been doing the same thing over and over again. And if you have, on the other hand, you say you have a set of people, a group of people who are doing or behaving in a certain way, then what, how do you change that? You don't mm. change mm -hmm. that by just sitting back and complaining about it. You also mm. need to come up with a strategy because that's the strategy that's been put there. We don't know what they are saying. Uh, we don't know how they're going to do, but we understand the personality of the people involved. And so we can actually perceive and tell exactly what's going to happen. You're in, in our own thoughts because of who and who is involved in all of this. And so it's important that uh, we take 2023 uh, very seriously behind uh, just the... Uh, uh, you know, just sitting back and talking about uh, the fact that, okay, yes, we're not impressed about this. How come these people are involved? It's the APC we're talking about, 2023. And of course, uh, you have a certain candidate that's been projected. So yes, let's get to the drawing board. If you feel dissatisfied with it, then it's okay to come up with another strategy to counter whatever strategy has been put out by different quarters. 
All right, so um, next on the chat is a 102-year-old woman who has presented herself for the 2023 president. And that has been, <laughs> that's been getting a lot of reactions across the board. I mean, for myself, when I saw it, the first thing I said, I'm going very earnest. I'm like, are we now on a joke? Is this country now? Everything is a joke in this country. But to be very honest, let's look at the Constitution. Everyone has a right to be voted and voted for. As long as we're concerned, the 1999 Constitution as amended has not put an age limit to who should not contest. And so that's why you have uh, a lot of persons come out to vote. So anybody can come out and she is exercising her right. She has a right to, you know, come out and declare an e her interest. Whether or not we feel that... Very oh, strong woman. You can see her there. <laughs> see her there. I mean, that's so much bravery if you, you know, want to talk know, about it. You know, but I, we cannot negate the fact that, you know, this is what it is. I mean, on the, you know, on the lighter note, we could say what we can say. I've, I've seen a lot of comments. Some people say, uh, um, we will vote her. Some people have actually... The, our president okay. is not uh, in his 50s. And you also have those others who are coming up right now. People are just using this 50s. thing to include catch crews. Exactly. Yeah, so the come, cruise is going on. Another, but to another, be very another realistic. Thing to joke about online. Mm -hmm. But we but need others, to establish the fact that everybody has a right to vote. Because the constitution has never said otherwise. There's, so you have uh, there's an age where you can actually contest. and so, But there's no uh, limit to who can actually contest. They don't say, oh, if you're more than 50, you can't contest. So she has a right. She's acting within her right. She's a Nigerian, and, and it's fine. The, the, the people would decide. Yeah, so, so, so this is uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Mrs. Noye Josephine Ezeyeche um, declaring her intention to vie for uh, the office of president in the 23 general elections. Um, um, she is the, the founder of a group known as the Voice, of, or Voice for Senior Citizens of Nigeria Organization. Voice for Senior Citizens of Nigeria Organization. And um, uh, she's been called by uh, some people, this is what they call her, a living legend, Mama Africa. Um, she's from Anambra State and Aguta, Aguata, rather, to be precise. So um, this is her on a visit to the management of the Nigerian Television Authority to express her readiness to contest for the top position um, if the younger generation of the country are not ready. That's what she said. So if maybe, the, maybe... If the younger generation are not ready, I, I will contest. And you can see she's talking clearly. She's um, uh, uh, very strong, articulate. She's in control of her, of her speech and everything. And, and I'm, I'm so proud to see Mama out there. You know, but the first thing, if I must be honest, uh, the first thing that... Uh, uh, popped up in my mind was uh, who is who is making Mama do this? You understand <laughs> who is who is making Mama do this? Who is who is, who is putting on? Grandma. Yeah, who is who is pushing her to do this? But but if if what she's saying is that um, if the youngsters are not going to come out, then I'll come out. Then I think that is a good statement. You know, if what she's saying is that if the youngsters are not going to come out, then I will put myself forward. I think that is that is a, a challenge to the younger generation to step forward. Mm. It's a challenge to the younger generation to take control and, and to do the needful, not to sit back and, and just fold your hands and complain and whine. Because, I mean, if you go down memory lane and down history, you realize that those who've controlled and ruled the country and uh, even, even organized coups, all right, and fought wars in this country in the past, they started from, from a young age. Um, but unfortunately, um, they have not left and the young people are waiting, and now the mentality has become that uh, you have to be old to do certain things. People start in their 20s. You know, the likes of Kwame Nkrumah, the likes of Nelson, Nelson Mandela, um, and Namdi Azikiwe, and all these guys. They started young. They started young. Even if you look at the, um, the business tycoons of those days, even you look at the, the religious leaders of these times, the likes of Oyedepo, of Adeboye, and co., you know, started at a young age. They started at a young age. So uh, we need to remind the young people that when you're 20 something, it's you're old enough to do things, you know. And um, whilst, you know, I, I think Mama doesn't mean, um, really mean, um, she wants to, like she says, if the young people won't come out, I'll come out. Um, the challenge is a good one. But I hope that, um, uh, you know, she can afterwards uh, uh, go take a rest. You know, at this age, you don't want to be resting too much because if you rest too much, you might lose some of your, your strength. You know, you want to be active and, and all that. So um, let, let's see how it pans out. Like you said, you know, she has the right to, to have an ambition like this. But apart from um, Mama Eze, Josephine, uh, uh, Noye Josephine Eze and Eche coming out, you know, some of the people who've been popping up online, 
you know, within the NASA Nigeria say, no, I want to be president. You know, I've seen some social media influencers, some youngsters abroad on Instagram saying, you now begin to ask yourself, is this becoming a joke? You know, people want to trend. Is this now a trend? You know, our youngsters know how to use some things as a joke. You know, it becomes a trend. Okay, let me just say I want to be president and let people talk about me and all that. So we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. So um, if it's a challenge, or it's a very good one. A lot of people have also seen that as a challenge, uh, the fact that maybe she's sending a, a message to a younger generation. But you also need to uh, understand that we can't just wake up from the blues and say you want to contest. Yes, it's a good challenge. But 2023 is here. How many more days do we have just before the elections, right? Uh, would it, is there enough time to have the young people Yes, as much as this could be a message, you know, to younger generation and to other persons who are out there who sh who have the capacity. But do we have enough time on the table? It would would there be enough time? Because like I would constantly say, whether or not you like it, you need to have st structures on ground. Elections are not just won by just being a young person or having a beautiful face and being very eloquent or having all of the education in the world. It goes beyond all of that. You need to have structures and these structures should be able to relate with the grassroots because that's how elections have been won. And so um, hopefully we get the, you know, the younger generation or uh, the message that she's trying to put out has been gotten. But you know, 2023, would that be a time for us to practice all of this? Well, time will tell, time will tell. <laughs> Interesting, but um, I'm kudos to Mama for not sitting back and uh, for throwing the challenge to the young people. Um, let's see how it goes. It's a promise to be an interesting um, race. I don't think I've seen this many uh, aspirants in a presidential race in Nigeria before. Um, you know, it's good to see people coming out and expressing their intention. You know, but um, you know, like cooking soup or stew, if you add too much water, it loses its, its taste. You understand? If you add too much water, it loses. So I hope that um, uh, all these voices coming out will not water down the essence of, of finding a new path or an, a progressive path, let's say, for Nigeria, you know, to, to improve on the way things are, because that's what needs to be done. Um, that's it on the top trending segment right here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Uh, we'll be back with more. We have uh, interesting headlines coming on the front pages of the National Daily. Stay with us.